So my last video on the book, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, uh, was about 10 minutes long and we just covered essentially the first chapter, uh, which doesn't even get into any of the seven habits. It just talks about paradigms and principles and kind of how we, uh, our lens for seeing things, uh, the lens through which we see the world and, you know, uh, how that impacts the way that we are, the way that we react, the way that we deal with situations and deal with people, um, the things that we think are possible, the things that we assume are impossible. All of that is basically through our conditioning, which is our paradigms. Um, it took me weeks to like script and film and edit and upload that. And then I was like, I'm going to do this for every single chapter or every single habit. I don't know. doesn't seem very effective to me. So this video is going to be a little bit quicker, um, more raw, unedited. We're just going to roll through it. So going through a summary of the seven habits, I'm going to start with what they are. Habit one, be proactive. Habit two, begin with the end in mind. Habit three, put first things first. Habit four, think win-win. Habit five, seek first to understand and then to be understood. Habit six is to synergize. And then habit seven is to sharpen the saw. So let's break these down. <clears throat> uh, the first three habits and the second three habits. Uh, so one, two, three is one group. And then four, five, six is another group. Um, he divides into the private victory and the public victory. And then habit seven is kind of like circling back on everything and how to improve over time by revisiting each of these areas. Okay. So the private victory um, is habits one, two, and three. So be proactive, begin with the end in mind, and put first things first. The idea here is that you can really only get to public victories and working with other people if you first master working on yourself. So being proactive is number one. Um, take responsibility for your own actions and choices. Instead of reacting to external forces, focus on what you can control and influence. Um, do you find yourself using reactive language like, you know, oh, that happened to me or, you know, um, it was out of my control um, because this happened. I had to do this. Um, or do you find yourself taking ownership of a situation and being proactive like, oh, next time I can do this or to get a different result? Maybe I should try this. Uh, I'm going to do this before this happens. So just being proactive and understanding that when you get ahead of things, you can have more influence over them. And that's both internal and external, uh, but proactivity, habit number one. Habit number two, begin with the end in mind. So what he says here, so summarizing, clarify your long-term goals and vision for your life. Visualize what you want to achieve and work towards uh, with a purpose and intention. Um, the metaphor he uses here is, um, you know, the, the builder that's going to make a house builds that house in his mind before anything else. He puts it on paper and makes the blueprints before the first nail is hammered into the wood. You know, um, basically having some kind of idea of where we want to get to, even if we don't get exactly there is going to help us be, you know, put put the right foot forward, essentially. Um, instead of just wandering around aimlessly and hoping that you get to where you want to go, you're going to have some idea of where you want to go and at least make steps in that right direction. So begin with the end in mind, basically visualizing where you want things to be, whether that's for you as a person, whether that's for you as a family, whether that's for your career, whether that is for um, the influence of a team, all of that, just begin with the end in mind and the steps you take now will be more effective in getting you to that result. Habit number three, put first things first. Um, this was explained to me in like, I don't know, elementary school as putting big rocks first. And the visualization that was used was they took a, a jar and they had three cups. They had some rocks, um, some pebbles, and then some sand. So the, the teacher dumped the sand in first and then the pebbles after that into the big jar and then the rocks and there wasn't enough room for the rocks. The sand took up all the space at the bottom. It didn't all work. So they dumped it all out. They sorted it again. And then they started with the big rocks. 
All right, so the big rocks filled up the jar and it looked like the jar was full, but there were these spaces in between and then they dumped the pebbles in and the pebbles filled in the spaces in between the big rocks and still were not overflowing from the jar. And then they took the sand and they dumped the sand on top and that filled in all the gaps between the pebbles and the big rocks and still the jar was not overflowing and miraculously everything fit. And the moral of that lesson was take care of important things first, take care of the most important things first. So it's prioritizing your tasks and activities based on their importance and urgency. Focus on high priority tasks that align with your goals and values. Uh, I think it's in this part that he uses the urgent versus important matrix. So the idea here is that a lot of things can be urgent, but they're not necessarily important. Some things are important and not necessarily urgent. Some things are both and some things are neither. Um, he draws this in a four by four grid uh, with, you know, four quadrants, sorry, two, two by two making four quadrants. And uh, quadrant two is where he says effective people spend most of their time. People that are living in the urgent and important matrix are like they're always putting out fires, right? And so they never have time to get important things done because they're always handling urgent and important things. And then there's things that are urgent but not important that don't necessarily need to be done and could be ignored. So, you know, sometimes the phone ringing is urgent because it's happening now and it's going to be over soon if we don't pick it up, right? But you don't always know that that's an important call. It could just be a telemarketer. So um, there's a lot more to dig into on that, but we're just going to move on for now. Uh, put first things first. So one, two, and three, those are the private victory. When you master those, we can move on to habits four, five, and six, which is the public victory. So habit four, think win-win. Seek mutually beneficial solutions in your interactions and relationships. Strive for cooperation and collaboration rather than competition or compromise. So a lot of people think that situations are win-lose, right? I have to win for you to lose. You have to lose for me to win. Or um, if you win, I lose, right? So win-lose, lose-win. Either way, um, people default to thinking that we both can't win. Um, he said there's also lose-lose, like nobody gets what they want. And uh, there were a few other things in that chapter. I don't know. I listened to it a while ago, so <laughs> it's escaping me now. But essentially, if we if we aim for win-win solutions, like they, they can be found in most situations. Um, there's another version of it that's win-win or no deal. Maybe we can look for that win-win solution, but if we can't find it, we can agree to just not take the deal, right? Not, not do the thing if we're, if not both of us will win. So think win-win, that's habit number four. Habit number five, seek first to understand, then to be understood. Practice empathetic listening and seek to understand others' perspectives before expressing your own. Communication is more effective when you genuinely listen to others. Um, I think this is also similar to the Socratic method of arguing where you have to like listen to the other person's side and be able to articulate it back to them. And they have to listen to your side and be able to articulate it back to you before you can begin to argue. And honestly, if you do both of those things, you probably won't even argue in the first place. You'll both be like, oh, okay, I get it. I get what your thing is, you get what my thing is. And then you kind of fall back on habit four, which is win-win, you know? So, uh, but let's assume that not everyone is gonna be on board to do that. So what can we do? We gotta focus on what we can control. Uh, so first, let's just seek to understand the other person. You wanna listen. You want to listen to understand and not just listen to speak next or to overpower them or to make your next move, right? Um, you have to listen with the intention of wanting to understand them and then express in some way that you, you think you understand them and ask them if that's right or if you don't quite have it right, if they could elaborate and articulate better so that you can better understand. You want them to know that you care to understand too. That's a huge part of it. Um, he also says, after you've done that, it is important to make sure that you are understood, right? So 
first, let them know, hey, I, I understand you, right? And, and I have it right, okay? Then I would like you to understand me before we move forward. And so you, you make your side known to them, but only after you have done all of your due diligence and trying to understand their side first. That is habit number, what was that, five? And my notes closed on me, there we go. Yeah, so that's habit number five. That's a huge one. We could spend a whole video just on that, but got to keep this relatively short. I'm already at 10 minutes and uh, I just want to get through habits six and seven. So six is synergize. Work collaboratively with others to achieve shared goals. Combine the strengths and perspectives of individuals to create innovative and impactful outcomes. Okay, so synergizing is, you know, one plus one equals three or one plus one equals 10. Um, it's when, you know, my efforts plus your efforts equal more than the normal added sum of the two, you know, it's, it's multiplication, right? So it's taking, um, my strengths, uh, to help your weaknesses and your strengths to help my weaknesses. And with the two things combined or with my skills and your skills, they might be in two different areas, but with those combined, we're able to do something that neither one of us could have done prior to collaborating, okay? So um, that is, in essence, synergy. Um, and he also points out that think win-win, seek first to understand, and synergize are all closely tied together, but they happen at kind of different points in the interaction. You know, the think win-win is kind of at the beginning of it. The seeking to understand is in the middle of it. And the uh, synergizing is kind of the fruit of doing the first two things. And the last thing that we have is habit number seven, sharpen the saw. So continually, continuously renew and improve yourself physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. Invest in self-care, learning, and personal growth to maintain balance and effectiveness in all areas of life. So this basically means, it means exactly what I just said. <laughs> so, you know, you want to focus on yourself and you want to focus on self-improvement, um, your, your physical, your mental, uh, your spiritual, whatever that means to you. Um, but you've got to reinvest in yourself. You've got to allot time for these things, right? You know, uh, get away from work, get away from, get away from things that distract you, you know, give yourself an opportunity to take care of yourself. Um, just the return on investment of exercising for 30 minutes a day, three to five days a week, you know, can help you sleep better and have more energy and focus more, you know, the rest of the entire week for the small amount of time that you spent doing it. Um, I should really take my own advice because I'm so bad about working out, but that is something that, you know, it, it multiplies itself. Um, giving yourself uh, time alone to just peacefully reflect on things um, gives your mind a chance to maybe think of things, um, solutions to problems it wouldn't have otherwise. It's kind of like the, um, uh, the being in the shower and the best ideas come to you when you're not trying to think about things at all your brain goes into a different, you know, space. So um, you've got to create these environments and atmospheres for yourself to allow these things to happen, to uh, allow yourself to get the benefits of them. And if you're not actively planning those things, um, which goes back to being proactive, then you're not giving yourself the chance to continuously grow. You know, every time we circle back to something that we've worked on before, we're able to build it a little bit higher. Um, we can't build one thing all the way too high and ignore all the others uh, or things will be kind of lopsided in our lives. So the idea that we work on them all kind of continuously, maybe within the span of a week, you are planning a little bit of time for each of the most important things, the, the physical, the mental, uh, the spiritual, um, you know, the educational. So uh, giving yourself time to read and all of that. All right, well, that is it. I have taken about 14 minutes and 34 seconds to do this video summary. I'm not gonna edit it, we're just gonna hit upload. I will link to the previous video, which I think was a lot more fun, and I put a lot of effort into editing it, but um, I do hope that if you like this video and got value out of it, you would like it. 
You would consider subscribing if you want to see more like this. I'm going to do a ton of book reviews. I just really wanted to finish up this book so I can move on to another one. But this is one of the most important books anybody can read. Uh, and I hope that this summary made it easier for you to get the information from the book. Uh, definitely check out the links in the description. You can pick up a copy of it or Audible, um, you know, listen to it, uh, all kinds of ways to get your hands on it. But again, consider subscribing to the channel so that you can check out the next book that I review here or here. One of those. I don't know. Anyway, enjoy. Thanks.